sin for me. James 5 and 16 say the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avail it much. Let us continue to pray for our pastor and for the entire church family. Let us stand on our feet as we continue in our worship by giving of our tithes and our offerings. Because how many know that God has been good to us? He keeps on blessing us over and over and over again. When we look around, we have so much we can thank God for. Repeat after me, please. We give thee but thine own. Whatever the gift may be, all that we have is thine alone. A trust, O oh Lord, from thee. Let us pray. Father, we thank you on today. We thank you, dear God, for you keep blessing us, dear God. Your steadfast love and mercy that you give us every day. God, we ask right now that you would bless our pastor, dear God. Continue to keep him in your own, Father. Now, God, each and every one that's given up tithes and offerings, we ask that you would bless us on today, God. God, we know that you love a cheerful giver. So let us give cheerfully, realizing, dear God, that it all belongs to you. Father, we ask this right now in your name, we pray. Amen and amen. Let us remain standing, those of us who can. And we're going to follow the directions of our ushers this morning as we give gracefully back to the Lord on this morning. Let us give cheerfully this morning. Get your house in order. in the 
Get your house in order.
According to Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 8, won't you stand for the reading of God's Word, Matthew chapter, Gospel chapter 8, verses 5 through 10. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 8, verses 5 through 10, and it reads, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lied at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. I love the way Jesus does that. He does it immediately. I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. Verse 10, when Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said unto them that followed, Verily, surely, truly, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And for a few minutes, I want to speak to you about next level faith. Next level faith. Some things are going to come against you in 2019 that you've never seen before. You've never seen a government shut down this long. <laughs> that faith you used in 2018 is going to have to increase. That's why the disciples say, Lord, increase our faith. You're going to need some faith for the next level. Matthew 6 and 33 said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Luke tells us in the 17th chapter, verse 20, being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, Look at it here or there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. I believe that if we take a look at the centurion and the way he approached Jesus for, on behalf of his servant, and we make it a personal application, I think that we can learn much for our own well-being. Because I want you to notice something now. We never meet the centurion's servant in this text. We don't know his name. We don't know if it's a he. We don't know if it's a she. We don't know how old they are. We don't know the servant's nationality. All we meet is the centurion. And the centurion come to Jesus on behalf of the servant. We don't know if the servant had faith or not, but we know that the centurion was believing Jesus for his word. Y'all don't hear me up in here. There's somebody in your family that you have to stand in the gap for. 
their faith may not be at that level where you are. But you can stand in a gap and God will act for you on their behalf. Amen. Amen. Now, this passage is found both in Matthew's gospel and Luke's gospel. Uh, Luke says, and a, centurion, and a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. He was at the point of death. But there are three things that I picked up in Luke's gospel. Luke chapter uh, 7 verse 3 say, And when he heard of Jesus, he said unto the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And the Bible says, uh, And when they came to Jesus, they besought him inst instantly. What I like about him, he's a right now God. You don't have to wait until you get to church. You don't have to wait until the prayer meeting on Tuesday. He's an instant God. He'll come right now. See, you, you can call him in the morning. You can call him at midday. You can call him in the midnight hour. He may not come when you want him. But I got I, I stopped by to tell somebody he's an on-time God. He's always, somebody know what I'm talking about. He's always right on time. And then it says, then Jesus went to them. But when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Now, immediately, um, Matthew says, uh, the centurion came uh, beseeching Jesus, approached Jesus, asked Jesus to come heal his servant. Immediately said, Jesus said, I will come. But actually, he had sent an entourage of the Jews to get Jesus. And when they went to Jesus, they didn't just say, uh, Jesus, oh, um, the centurion needs you to come and heal his servant. Now, the centurion, uh, he was a man under authority. He, centurion means a hundred. So he was captain of at least a hundred men. And so the centurion said, wait a minute, I ain't worthy for Jesus to come under my roof. Go tell the master, don't trouble himself to come to my house. Tell him all he got to do is speak the word. Now, now, Jesus is on, on his way to your house to heal your servant personally. Centurion said, tell him he don't need to come. Tell him just speak the word. See, all you got to do when you're operating in kingdom authority is just speak the word. Because God said heaven and earth is going to pass away, but my word is going to stand. The Bible says God is watching over his word. Ezekiel said, God is watching over his word. And he hastens to perform it. What does that mean? That means when you got, when you call God to remembrance of his word, when you tell God, God, you said that you would do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I ask or think, God gets in a hurry to meet you in your situation. He watches over his word. See, you just got to call on his word. What I like about Matthew, Matthew said that you can speak to your situation, Brother Calvin. He said, if you shall say to this mountain, you got to speak to your situation. Whatever you're going through right now, speak to that mountain. Whatever it's going through, you got a marriage problem, speak to that mountain. Say, mountain, move. Get out of my way. Now, now we used to sing a, a song at Old Providence Church when I was a little boy. It said, I'm going up the rough side of the mountain, and I'm doing the best I can. I, I, heard the, I hate to bust your bubble, but that's not biblical. Biblical is not for me to go up the rough side of the mountain. Biblical is for me to command that mountain to move in the name of Jesus and get out of my way. And I, what, I, what I love about it, he said, if you shall say to this mountain, be ye moved and cast into the sea, and believe in your heart, and shall not doubt, you shall have whatsoever you say. You got to say it. You got to speak it. Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Now, now watch what he said. 
when you speak to that mountain in, in 2019, you're going you to need some next level faith. You're going to need some mountain moving faith. And so you're going to have to speak to that mountain. Sometime, I, I was telling the brothers in, uh, in men's leadership class, sometime when I speak to my mountain, I don't know how God's going to do it, so I might doubt it in my head. But the word didn't never say I couldn't doubt it in my head. The word said I can't doubt it in my heart. If you will speak to this mountain and believe and not doubt in your heart, see, when, when, when I told him, I said, when the angel came to Mary and said, uh, Mary was a virgin, and said, uh, you're going to conceive a son. And that holy thing that's born of you going to be called the son of God, Mary didn't doubt in her heart, but she doubted in her head. She asked Gabriel, she said, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? It's all right for you to question God sometimes. It's all right for you to doubt in your head because, let me tell you, God is omniscient. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows what's going to happen next week. He knows what's going to happen next month. He knows what's going to happen next year. Nothing sneaks up on God. He knows the end from the beginning. He's God all by himself. But what I love about it is there's no temptation that's taken you. The Bible says, but such as is common to man. But with the test that God had already provided a way to escape. Somebody say, if you're going to worry, don't pray. But if you're going to pray, don't worry. Somebody say push, P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Pray without ceasing. The Bible says in the book of Acts 12, chapter, that when Peter got in trouble, Pastor Gaines is in a little trouble. Say that the church went down in prayer. But they didn't just pray for a little while. The Bible said they went down in prayer without ceasing to God. And the Bible said a couple, a couple hours later, Peter had been released. An angel came and released Peter from prison, and Peter came knocking on the door. Let me tell you, God has got your back. But you need to understand kingdom authority, and you need to have a next level faith in 2019. Because let me tell you, it gets you a good prayer partner. You know, get around somebody who believes God. Get, get around a friend that, that, that's a Bible-reading friend, a Bible-believing friend. Uh, get around some people who like to praise God. Get around some people who are doing things for God. You know, get, get, get in a godly atmosphere. Get in an atmosphere of praise. Amen. Now, it's important that you understand kingdom authority, and kingdom citizenship. Now, United States is a democracy. Excuse me. Democracy is government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And you, we go to the polls, and we exercise our right to vote. Everybody has a say in a democracy. It don't matter if you're Democrat, Republican, rich, black, uh, black, white, rich, poor, everybody got to say in a democracy. But in a kingdom, God is a king. He got all power, all power is in his hand. Nobody has a right to disagree with him because he owns everything and he made everything. And he can do anything but fail. Somebody said uh, he's too mighty to fail. He's too faithful to lie, and he's too wise to make a mistake. He's God all by himself. So we are kingdom citizens, and we, we serve at the discretion of the king. And God has given us some authority in his kingdom. For he said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. He said, whatsoever you bound on earth, I'm going to bind it in heaven. Whatsoever you lose on earth, I'm going to lose it in heaven. But we've got to use our kingdom authority. Look what he says here. He says, he heard Jesus, the centurion. He heard of Jesus or about Jesus, but then he came to Jesus. You know, some people hear about Jesus, but they never really come to Jesus. And that's why, you know, Jesus told uh, his disciples the kingdom of God don't come with observation, 
the kingdom is within you. What Jesus was saying is that I want to establish my kingdom on the throne of your heart. You've got to let God be God of all of your life. And then Jesus went with them. Wherefore, this is what the centurion said, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. I like that. For I also am a man under authority. I'm a man under authority. Watch this. Centurion said, he didn't say, I am a man under authority. I don't have the script up there. He said, I also, underline the word also, I also am a man under authority. Having servants, I tell them come, they come. I tell them go, they go. I tell them do this, and they do it. Now, the centurion is in Capernaum. He's a servant of Caesar. Caesar is in Rome, 1,500 miles away. But when he commands his soldiers, they don't see him, they see Caesar. So the centurion tells Jesus, I understand kingdom authority, because I'm a man under authority myself. He said, you don't have to come. He said, Caesar don't have to come to Capernaum. When I order my soldiers, I don't wait for Caesar to come all the way, all the way from Rome to order my soldiers here in Capernaum. All I got to do is speak the word. He said, you don't have to come all the way to my house. He said, I know your authority is from God. All you got to do is speak the word. And my servant shall be healed. Now, there's a word in this scripture. In this, there's a word in this Bible, in these 66 books, or whatever you're going through. Don't worry about messing up. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Your steps have already been ordered. Sister uh, Cheryl told us that God has a plan for our future. He said, but you've got to write the vision. You've got to speak to your situation, and you've got to write the vision. You've got to make the vision plain. The Bible says so that he that readeth it may run. And after the centurion talked to Jesus, this is the only place in the Bible where the Bible says Jesus marveled. Jesus said, I have not seen faith like this. He said, no, not in Israel. Now, now this is what you say. You say, God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. I got some news for you. If God said it, that settles it, whether you believe it or not. Because when God says something, it's got to happen. Every word of God is true. Every word is true. He said, heaven and earth will pass away. He said, but my word will stand in the empty air. He said in his word, don't worry about who's against you. He said, if God is for you, then he's more than the world against you. Don't worry about your enemies. Take a word from Joseph. Joseph said, all my brothers did me. He said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. How many know God can turn your situation around? He's able to say to the uttermost. Well, you have to use your kingdom authority, speak to your situation in the name of Jesus. You see, when I speak in the name of Jesus, what I'm doing, I'm admitting the bankruptcy of my own name. See, if I try to do it in my own strength, I'm going to mess it up. I got to do it in the name of Jesus. Matter of fact, the Bible says, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus. Because in him we live, in him we move. Somebody's going to pray with me. In him we move, in him we have our being. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So when I declare the name of Jesus over this situation, let me tell you, demons got to flee. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. And demons have got to flee. Let me see if I can explain kingdom authority to you one more time. 
And I, then I'm gonna take my seat. And there's a diva sitting over here, a chick, and her name is Miss Thing. Yeah, that, that, that's a diva. There's a diva sitting over here somewhere. Her name is Miss Thing. T H A N, not T H I N G, T H A N G, Miss Thing. Now, Miss Thing, she's blessed, but she's broke. But they got a gentleman sitting over here. His name is Mr. Everything. Mr. Everything, he has houses, he has cars, he has collateral, he has credit cards. So one day, Mr. Everything spots Miss Thing. Remember, she's broke, but she's blessed. So Mr. Everything asked Miss Thing out on a date. They end up at the altar getting married. Now it's no longer Miss Thing and Mr. Everything. It's Mr. and Mrs. Everything. Miss Thing, she was blessed and she's broke. she was broke. But now she got houses. Now she got cars. Now she got credit cards. Well, that's how your kingdom authority is. See, you married to Jesus now. You are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. And everything that God owns, you own. He said the silver is mine. The gold is mine. The sheep on a thousand hills are mine. But seek ye first the kingdom. Somebody said, seek ye first the kingdom. Somebody said, seek ye first the kingdom and all of its righteousness. And see all that stuff you're trying to get, all that stuff you're working so hard for, all that stuff you're stealing. He said, all these things. God bless you. That's my message. You heard the message. Seek ye first the kingdom. Right now, the doors of the church is open. The Bible tells us that now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Why don't you come now? While the blood is still running warm in your veins. He says, Behold, I stand before you and now. All you have to do is just open the doors. And I'll come in and sup with you. Why don't you come this morning? may be looking for a church home. Why don't you make this your last stop? God is speaking to your heart this morning. Why don't you come? If you need somebody to walk with you, we'll walk with you.
Amen. So uh, while we're waiting, you can play softly while we're waiting for Sister Janice to come back with the report. Uh, I told you I wasn't going to be but a few minutes with you because I know y'all were in playoff mode. But I have a confession to make. My wife and I have playoff tickets and I really needed to get out of here. <laughs> So uh, when I'm, I'm talking to Pastor Gaines on the phone, I think Wednesday night we were making uh, preparations for, for the funeral, and uh, Sister Gaines was on the phone, and he said, well, you know, Pastor's not feeling well, uh, he, he wants you to preach Sunday, Sunday morning. So I told Teresa, I said, uh, Pastor Gaines wants me to preach Sunday morning, and Teresa said, we got playoff tickets. <laughs> Amen. God is good. Uh, he's worthy. Uh, he just keeps giving us brand new mercy uh, every day. Every day. If we can't beat his giving, no matter how hard we try. Uh, I encourage you, if you heard Sister Cheryl Gaines' message this morning about writing a vision and doing a vision board for 2019, I do a vision board every year. Uh, you'd be surprised the results you get if you prioritize your goals for 2019 and put it up on a vision board. What the vision board does, it reminds you, every time you see that vision board, it reminds you of what your goals are. So you put forward extra effort by being constantly reminded that I have some goals I need to meet. Without the vision before you, you forget about it and you may eventually fall off the wagon. Amen. But she, she gave a very good inspirational message this morning. Amen. I think somebody better go get Sister Janet. continue to keep our pastor in prayer. On the strength of that message, we have Brother Anderson Perilou. Would you just please raise your hand, Brother Perilou. Brother Perilou accepted Christ and he want to be baptized. God is still doing the work at Antioch. Brother Anderson Perilou is coming from Riverland Christian Center where the pastor was Steve Perilou. And also we have Le Omani Monroe Baptiste. She accepted Christ doing children's church last week. And she's the granddaughter of our own sister Jeannie Baptiste. Thank you. I'll let the church say amen. Uh, why don't you rise on your feet? Receive the benediction. Benediction, and that the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, continue to rest, rule, and abide. God bless us, bless us, bless us, help us, help us, help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm sorry. Brother Paralu, Brother Paralu, before you leave, we want to welcome uh, Brother Perilou uh, to the fellowship. Uh, welcome to First Community Antioch Baptist Church on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Gaines, our First Lady, Sister Gaines, and the entire Antioch family. Uh, we sure you're coming to a place uh, where there are no big shots, no little shots. Jesus is the only shot. Uh, you're either going to bring more of what we already have or something that we don't have. In either case, we are blessed people and a better people because of you. Uh, would you receive him with an amen and a round of applause? Amen. God bless. 